relationships come from? It comes from God. Because oftentimes we should be homeless, we should be godless, we should be down and out. I shouldn't even be here. I was thinking today, uh, I should not even have had the ability to be married close to 40 years. I should not have even seen my children uh, raised, be raised and, and be a part of their living and a part of their success. And, and I should not have even been able to see my grandchildren living. But God was patient to me. He was patient with me. Ooh. I tell you, God is just awesome. He's just awesome. It's going a little different than, than what I... So he comes home and, and then the son comes to the father and the father gives him a ring and tells him, this is my son who was lost, but now is found. Who was blind, who now can see. I'm trying to explain to you that you need to have patience. I look at my children today, and because God gave me patience, each one is successful. Each one has a family. Everything I wanted for them, they have it, but they didn't have it in my order. I had an order, but God had a greater order. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Uh, step back and allow God to work the work. Let God do the thing. Help me hold the cause. I tell you, God is good. Virtue is a moral, excellent, and godliness. And godliness is righteousness. Patience is a virtue. If you can have patience, you also possess God. Let patience possess your soul. Let patience have a perfect work and an entirely wanting nothing. God uh, wants to work in us and to us but we must have patience we need to have patience we need to be able not to get anxious at every situation be troubled on every hand uh, we need to uh, have a little patience we need to pray church for patience I realize if you pray for patience, uh, because uh, tribulation work of patience, uh, uh, you're going to go through anyhow. Uh, uh, the reason you're going through what you're going through uh, is because God wants you to have patience. Lord, have mercy. Uh, the reason uh, uh, that the, your, your music career, Isaiah, has not gone into full bloom uh, is because God wants you to have patience. Uh, he doesn't want you to get out there uh, with the artist, uh, with all the different artists uh, that have so many different influences uh, and to take you away. Uh, but after you suffered a little while, I'm preaching now, uh, God will establish you. Uh, he'll strengthen you. Uh, he'll make you perfect. Uh, and he'll settle you. Uh, the reason you're going through what you're going through uh, is because God wants you to have some patience. Uh, somebody say, yeah. yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, the patience might be uh, on your child. Ah, uh, God, uh, he said, stand still uh, and seek the salvation of the Lord. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, God wants you to have some patience. Uh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, so patience uh, can have his perfect work. Uh, patience uh, 
with your children. Somebody say, yeah. Patience with your education, with your career. Yeah, Lord, hallelujah. Patience with your wife, with your husband. Yeah, if you're waiting on God, and you're not married yet. He wants you to be patient. Hallelujah. Let patience have a perfect work and entirely. Let patience run its race. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. I thank God for patience. And I thank him for my tribulation that work in patience and patience experience and experience hope. Yes, patience leads to hope. It's important. Patience will lead to hope. The reason you're going through what you're going through right now is because God wants you to have patience. Patience allows you to know God. It allows you to understand and it gives you discipline. It teaches you. We're, we're almost finished. I told you in the beginning we were going to talk about a woman this woman people don't usually talk about in the Bible. She's in one of the books of the Bible whose name not after her, but maybe the book should be referencing her name. But she is a woman who had patience. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, which woman in the Bible, we know what's man, Job. Job had patience, but I didn't want to talk about Job. Job is probably overrepresented. Job is probably overrepresented in preacher sermons. I want to talk about somebody else that had patience. I wanted to let this person identify with you. Because sometimes what happens is when, when we think that God has given up on us, it's just about the time we're ready to give up on God. But then God only wants us to have patience. God is talking to me. Look, we're getting ready to go into a famine. We've been talking about it for quite a while. And we're going to see this famine. Now you're going to need patience. Are you listening to me? Because you don't go into a famine and then it's done the next day. It wouldn't be called a famine. It might be called a missed meal. You just missed the meal. Isn't the Lord good? Yes, he yeah. is. But a famine is when you have a lack of, a shortage, a shortage of, and it's for a long time. Are you listening to me? years and we're going to need to be patient in ministry some of you God has called in ministry and it's not moving like you wanted to do but God wants you to be patient some of you are in careers and the careers are not moving the way you wanted to do but God wants you to be Patient. Some of you are raising children and not always making the right decision and God wants you to be patient. God wants you to be patient. Patience is a virtue. It's a fruit 
of the spirit. You need to have it. You can't exist without it. Because you're going to find yourself in trouble without patience. This woman was married, and there was a famine. And God spoke to her and said, I want you to go, you and your husband, to Moab. So she left Bethlehem, uh, Judah, and she moved to, took her husband and her two sons. So in other words, she was a Jewish woman who left the area where she was, she grew up and went to an area that she was a stranger. She was a foreigner. But God blessed her. And her husband. Her name was Naomi. And uh, Naomi, she her husband was named Elimamech, and has two sons, and they left. When she got to Moab, her sons married. Not long after her sons married, guess what? Her husband, Elimelech, died. Within the space of 10 years, her two sons died. You can't have greater grief than having someone that is your loved one to die. Just think about it. Your husband died, your wife died, your children died. She thought that she was cursed. But, but an element of patience was in her. She was grieving, she was hurting, she was sorrowful. Can you imagine what she was going through? She changed her name. She, she left her where she was and went back to Bethlehem, Judah. And then when she got there, uh, they said, Naomi has returned. And she said, don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara, which meant bitter, grieving widow. She was destitute. Her sons had married and they had two wives. One was called Oprah and the other was called Ruth. And uh, Naomi told her, said, I'm leaving, I'm going back to Jerusalem or Bethlehem. 